All right, welcome to lesson 13 problem set. And let me zoom in here. 200% uh, usually works well. And get my name on the paper. James, again, this week, hopefully I'll be showing you how to do these problem sets virtually as well. I'm gonna change color to blue today. Complete the sentences with the correct correct number of units, and then complete the equation. Four groups of blank tenths is 1.6. Well, let's convert this to the tenths so that we can understand it and see it a little bit better. Well, four groups of blank tenths is 16 tenths. Well, four times what is 16? Well, it's four groups of four, right? So, and then if we think about that backwards, well, 16 tenths divided by four is going to be four tenths. But let me write it in standard form because I started writing it in unit form, 0 0.4. Great, let's keep doing that. Well, let's convert this to, well, they want hundreds, so 32 hundredths. Okay, well, 8 times what gives you 32? 8, 16, 24, 32. Yeah, that's four groups, or eight groups of four hundredths. Well, let's, again, convert it backwards for dividing. 32 hundredths divided into four, eight equal groups is going to be four hundredths. Well, four hundredths is 0 0.04. Ooh, seven groups of blank thousands is 84 thousands. So let's convert this 84 thousands. Ooh, well, seven times 10 is 70, right? So let's do one more seven than that. That would be 77. So that's 11 groups. Let's add one more seven to that. Oh, that's 84. So seven groups of 12 thousands is 84 thousandths. And so did we just have to think of that backwards now. 84 thousandths divided by seven. Well, we know seven times 12 is 84. So if we went backwards, it would be 12 thousandths. And 12 thousandths looks like 0 0.012. Okay, that next one on D, 2.0. What is that in tenths? Well, 20 tenths. Well, five times what gives us 20? Yeah, five times four tenths gives us two, or five times four tenths gives us 20 tenths. So if we think about that in division, 20 tenths divided by five is going to give us those four tenths. Four tenths looks like 0 0.4. All right, let's scroll down and let's check on the second section. Complete the number sentence. Express the quotient. So the quotient is the answer of a division problem in units and then in standard form. So we're going to answer in unit form and then answer in standard form. Well, let's convert 4.2 into tenths. Well, 42 tenths. So 42 tenths divided by 7. Well, what times seven gives us 42? Well, that would be six. And six tenths looks like 0 0.6. So let's keep working on this one. Okay, so they want us to convert this into, look at the number sentence. Whoops, sorry about hit my space bar. It wants us to convert it to num ones and then hundreds. So, well, there's, two ones in this number, and then there's 64 hundredths. Well, two divided by two is always one. Well, anything divided by itself is always one, I should say. And then 64 divided by two. So we're talking about hundredths. So if I cut that in half, I'm left with 32. So one, one plus 32 hundredths, one, one and 32 hundredths. Great. Again, 
you can see that they want us to convert on C or decompose into two different units. Wants us into ones and hundreds. So it's 12 ones and 64 hundreds. And we're dividing both of those by two. So 12 divided by two is six. 64 divided by two again is 32. So we have six ones and 32 hundreds. Great job. This is why I really love unit form because it simplifies it for our brain. Is that as far down as I can go? Okay. There it is. All right. This one only wants it, it wants it in tenths and hundredths. So our tenths will be the whole number all the way to our tenths. So it would be 42 tenths. And then our hundredths by itself would just be six hundredths. So 42 tenths divided by six should be. What times six gives us 42? Well, oops, didn't mean to tap a button. Get my pen back. 42 tenths plus, well, what's six divided by six? Yep, just one. And that unit comes down with it, so it's one hundredth. And seven tenths plus one hundredth, so zero ones. 7 tenths and 100, 0 0.71. Great job. All right, let's check out page two. Oop, more of the same, except they're making us do it all. Now we have to think about where we're going to decompose to. So we're dividing by six. So we're looking for multiples of six. Six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, and as I was saying those, I saw 42 and a 36, right? So 42 stops in the tenths place, so it's 42 tenths. And then I'm going to decompose the rest of the number to thousandths. So it's, whoops, I should show that the division first, 42 tenths divided by six. And then we also got 36 thousandths. divided by six. So 42 tenths divided by six, well, that's seven tenths. And then 36 divided by six, well, that would be six, and we keep our unit. So it's six thousandths. So seven tenths would be 0 0.7. Six thousandths, well, there would be zero in the hundredths place, and six in the thousandths. So our answer would be 0 0.706. Great job. And then let's finish this strong and then do one of the word problems or two of the word problems on the back page. All right. Yep. I think we're on a good time so far. We're moving pretty quick. And it says find the quotients. Then use words, numbers, or pictures to describe any relationships you see between the pairs of problems and the quotients. Well, 32 ones divided by eight should give us four ones, right? Well, if we could decompose this to make it easy, it will be 32 tenths divided by eight gives us well, four tenths. Did you notice anything about that? Well, the answer is when we convert to uniform, it's both 32 divided by eight, but the unit is changing everything, right? So it changes where the decimal is. It changes how we think about the number. So again, 81 divided by nine. So 81 ones divided by nine. It's going to give us nine ones. And then eight, this one over here is 81 thousandths divided by nine. Again, 81 divided by nine is always nine but nine thousandths. And if I change my color and represent those in standard form, 9.0 is a lot different than 0 0.009. So even though we use the same math problem in 81 divided by nine, our units, ones versus thousands, changes a lot of different things. I would rather have nine dollars than nine thousandths of a dollar, right? All right, last couple problems on this side. Are there quotients below reasonable? So are the answers accurate? So 
we have 56 tenths and they're dividing it by seven. So it's 56 divided by seven, eight. Well, yeah, but what's our unit? It should be eight tenths. So that is wrong. So this one is actually wrong. I'm just gonna use numbers to explain, showing that this answer should actually be eight tenths. Okay, well, this one, I don't see a decimal in that number, so I know it's 56 ones divided by seven, and they're saying it's eight tenths. 56 divided by 7, we know is 8, but the unit is 1s. So again, this one is wrong. So let's try this one. This one's in the hundreds, so 56 hundreds. And again, we're dividing by 7, so we know that this is going to be 8, but bring our unit with it, 8 hundreds. Oh, well, 8 hundreds looks like 0 0.08, right? So that one actually was right. Nice. All right, let's do these word problems on the back and then be done with this lesson. All right, let's do five together. 12.48 or 12 and 48 mil, 12 and 48 hundredths of milliliters of medicine were separated into doses of four milliliters each. So divided into equal groups of four milliliters. How many doses were made? Well, 12 and 48 divided by four. So if I'm thinking about this, I'm looking for multiples of four. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, 48, 52. And I did see those. I see a multiple, I see two sets of multiples here. So I see 12 ones, and we're gonna divide that by four, and then we're gonna do 48 uh, hundredths, and we're gonna divide that by four. So if we think about 12 ones divided by four, that's gonna be three ones. And then 48 divided by four, well, 48, well, four times 10 is 40, four more would be 44, that's 11, four more would be 48, so that would be 12 hundredths. So we just solved this using unit form, decomposing to different multiples, and then using our knowledge of basic math facts. So three ones and 12 hundredths, three ones and 12 hundredths. And remember the original unit was milliliters. So it was 3.2, 12 milliliters. So actually it's not milliliters, it's doses because it says how many doses were made. So 3.12 doses. And then if we were to create a statement, we would just say 3.12 doses were made, period. That solves the problem. All right, let's do the last one on this side. And it says the price of milk of 2013 was around $3.28 a gallon. That was eight times as much as you would have probably paid for a gallon in the 1950s. What was the cost of a gallon of milk during the 1950s? So if it's asking us that that was eight times as much as you would have paid for in the past, it's actually not saying that we're multiplying, even though it says eight times. We actually have to think about the math in, or the story in the problem. It's saying that back in the past, it was eight times less than what we pay right now. So we need to divide. So we need to find out what eight times less than 328 is. So 3.28 and we're dividing that by eight. So we're dividing by eight. So we're looking for multiples of eight, eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 44. And I see a 32 and then I see an eight, right? So if I think about that, I have 32, and that's in the tenths place, so it's 32 tenths, and then the eight is in the hundredths. And I know that I'm gonna divide each spot by eight, right? So if I was thinking about that, well, 32 divided by eight, or what times eight gives us 32? Well, that's four tenths. 
and then eight divided by eight, anything divided by itself is one. So we got four tenths and one hundredths. So that would look like 0 0.41. And then it says, show your calculations. I know it says use a tape diagram, but we haven't practiced that lately. So we're just gonna show it with our numbers today. And we're showing our calculations. So what was the cost per gallon? Well, here's the answer, but let's put it in a statement. What was the cost of a gallon during milk during the 1950s? The cost, actually let me change color so you can actually see where I'm writing a little bit nicer. The cost for a gallon of milk in 1950s was 41 cents or zero and 41 hundredths of a dollar. Great job. All right, now you're gonna move on to the exit ticket and turn it in digitally. All right, good job guys.